Do you ever notice how nostalgia becomes more acute as we get older? As the years pass, we collect a lot of memories and we collect a lot of stuff that has the weight of carrying all those memories. And sentimental clutter is one of those things that is a heavy topic and it's also one of the most challenging categories of clutter to conquer. Whether we like it or not, it's something that we all have to face as we get older. And so I wanna help you make the best choices you can to both honor your memories and make space for new ones. So in today's episode of the Speak Organized podcast, I'm gonna be breaking down five tips and mindset shifts that are gonna help you determine what is worth keeping, what's worth holding on to, versus what is holding you back. So stick around, let's get into it. Hey, and welcome to the I Speak Organized podcast. This is episode four, and I'm your host, Melanie Summers, professional organizer, decluttering expert, and productivity-based life coach. I like to speak organized to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business of tidying. So we're gonna dive in, in today's episode, into the five tips and mindset shifts that are gonna help you deal with those sentimental items that might be taking up a lot of space in your home and in your life. Maybe you have a garage full of antique furniture that your great aunt left to you in her will and it's gathering dust and making it impossible to park your car and you have tons of artwork and just all these things that you feel any sentimental item that you feel obligated to keep or you feel guilty about getting rid of, I wanna help give you some tools that you can pull from your back pocket when you're ready to go through these items and decide what is worthy of taking up space in your home and what can be let go of. You might be working through the belongings of a loved one who has just recently passed. This is something that is very difficult to deal with and I often work with clients to help them through the process of determining what really is special, what is worth preserving the memory of, and what is gonna help represent their lives moving forward and create and reserve space for you to create new memories. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And if you're new here to the Speak Organized Universe, I wanna welcome you and just make sure that you are up to date and in the loop on all of the things that I have going on for you. And currently, right now, I'm running a free workshop. It's called the Better Habits in 30 Days Workshop. And it's an opportunity for you to get a little crash course on productivity practices that you can implement into your life that are gonna help you create more time in your day if you feel like you're, you're always drowning under the weight of just too much stuff, too many tasks, too many to-dos. It's gonna help you sort of organize those things and prioritize in a way that makes sense for your life and apply some of these principles that are gonna help you start new healthier habits and learn ways of making them stick. So you can sign up for free. Again, I will leave a link in the show notes. You can check it out and receive instant access if you're listening to this podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be down in the description area as well as the top pinned comment. You can click that link, sign up, and just dive right in. I would be honored to have you and I hope that you find it super useful. And if you've ever thought about working with a productivity life coach before, you need a clutter coach, or you wanna work with a professional organizer, I'll also leave a link in the show notes and down in the description where you can check out all the different ways that you might be able to work with me to get on my schedule and get some help with some of these heavier, more difficult things. And you just know that you need that extra accountability. You need somebody to sit with you or you just need a plan, whatever it is. I've got tons of options to help you through all of this stuff and it's very common it's very overwhelming and sometimes it's just nice to know that you can invest in the success of moving forward and achieving these goals to live a, li a life that is more clutter free so I want to make sure you have all that information and all those resources are available to you if you need them so go ahead and check it out down in the show notes 
All right, so let's go ahead and dive in to the first of these five things. And this is really sort of a mindset shift, and it's a really important one. I'm gonna do my best to provide some examples and break it down. So number one is to understand that if everything is special, then nothing is special. And this is one that I notice a lot of my clients with kids really struggle with. And I'll use the example of kid artwork. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about with this. So your kids bring home all kinds of stuff from, you know, all the way from preschool all the way up through high school. And I help clients create memorabilia boxes and boxes to contain artwork in school archival systems and things like that. And sometimes your kids really just don't wanna let go of anything. Every single finger paint handprint is special. Every single doodle of Pokemon is special. And they wanna keep it all. And you feel guilty about not receiving it as the gift they think it is. And this sort of mentality carries well into adulthood and it's part of the reason why we feel so guilty about letting things go that we feel like are special to somebody else. And so it just takes practice and a little bit of understanding of what goes on behind the scenes. And so I'm gonna use an analogy that I use with clients that have kids, and this really seems to be very effective. And so hopefully it helps you. In my previous job, before I became a professional organizer, I worked in the arts and I taught a lot. I ran auditions and I did casting for productions. And so as a casting director, when you're looking for somebody to fulfill a specific role or you're looking to hire somebody when you are going through the hiring process, you're looking for something very specific. And for me, it never came down to the pool of people not being talented enough or not being good enough. It really just was that you're looking for something very specific for this production or for this part. There are very specific things that need to be in place for the overall production to work and be successful. There is nothing wrong with making a critical decision. And in fact, it's a very healthy thing and it's a healthy practice to get in the habit of young so that as you grow up, you learn how to prioritize properly. You're not stuck in the, well, I'm just gonna keep it all mentality because I don't know how to make I don't know how to prioritize or make the, the decision. I can't possibly get rid of something, right? So we wanna get out of that mindset and making critical calls is a very important thing to be able to do. So if you put yourself in the casting director position, you're determining what it is that is the right fit for your space, for your life, what represents you. Um, versus feeling the guilt of getting rid of something that represented somebody else or wasn't the right fit for you or is just taking over your home and your space. Your kids can get in on this process as well. I argue that it's really important that they learn how to do that so that they truly know what is special, what they worked really hard on and what deserves to be displayed um, or held onto in some sort of memorabilia box or, or file system, archival file system. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So feel free to take that one and use it. And then also this is a great opportunity to work on focused goal setting. So if everything is as special as something else, then that means that you have nothing to work towards. You have already achieved greatness. And we all know in reality that that's not true. That's not how the real world works. And we don't want to set ourselves and set our kids up for the disappointment of that sting of failure. Because failure is actually a skill and it needs to be put into the proper perspective. If we're not exposed to it, then we don't know how to handle it. And it can be very difficult. And really, when something isn't good enough to make the cut, it just means that we have a goal to achieve and we need to do a little bit more work or we need to try something different or we need to get a little bit more training or more practice to level up, to then create something or hold on to something or achieve a goal that is worthy of its place. So again, like this is just a life lesson 
really super important to understand how to prioritize. So that's number one. And then number two is to determine a firm spatial boundary. So this is a very practical thing. So a spatial boundary could be a room, it could be a shelf, it could be a box. It really depends on what type of sentimental item we're talking about. If it's furniture, obviously it's going to be a room. And if you're gonna be hanging on to stuff and it, it's actually special, it deserves to have a proper place. The garage with a sheet over it to maybe protect it from some dust, isn't really indicative of that item being special. It doesn't show that you value that thing. It just shows that you don't know what to do with it and you feel guilty about getting rid of it. If you have items like that and you don't have a clear intention for where they're gonna live, you don't have a, a, a space for it, then it's worth exploring letting it go. And if you really just can't bring yourself to get rid of something, then sit down and start to write out or envision exactly where that thing is going to live. And then try it out, take it and dust it off and do it before it's too late. Because when you put things like that into storage, you introduce bugs and rodents and uh, water, mold, all of these things that are going to eventually damage this stuff and render it useless. And then you will have lost your opportunity to really add the value that it would give to your space if you were gonna keep it. So determine a firm spatial boundary. Now, if we're talking about, uh, we can use artwork again or papers, create a archival file box if it's your kid's stuff and whatever fits in that box is what you keep. And eventually you might need to go through and sort of see what you're holding on to as things become full. You don't wanna start cramming and stuffing to just keep it all. You might go through and look at something and determine, okay, well, you know, this piece of artwork really isn't actually that special and you know, my son doesn't want to hang on to it anymore. This is from like five years ago and he doesn't really care about it. And you can do this together again. And then replace that with something new that is more representative of who they are now and something that they will want to sit and look back on or use for their portfolio or whatever it is. Um, if it's a memory for you, just make sure that you are not overfilling your container and you can use the container as the boundary so that you don't have to make the decision. The container can make the decision for you so that you don't feel obligated to keep everything. You can blame the container and say, well, it's full. And so now I have to let some of this other stuff go. And obviously the smaller the container is, the less you'll be able to keep, the more often you will have to go through this process, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It can actually be a great exercise, again, in prioritizing and determining what really truly has value. All right, moving on to tip number three, which is sort of an extension of tip number two, is to build a memorabilia box for each member of your family. And you can determine the size of this box, it can be whatever you want, and make one for yourself, make one for your partner, for your kids, whoever, and just keep it reasonable, whatever the size is. And so this is how I personally determine the size of a memorabilia box for my family. And if you wanna go off of this, you are certainly welcome to, and, and maybe this will help give you a jumping off point to start your own. So I always think of it as something that would be easy to access in my old age, something that's not super heavy, that's not gonna be buried somewhere in the back, that I'm not gonna be able to get to it, I'm not gonna have to dig through stuff to get to it, and I'm gonna be able to very easily pick it up and set it on my lap and open it up and look through it. And these are things that are gonna be really special and just represent a sort of catalog of, of that person's life or of my life or whoever's, whoever's box it is that I'm looking through. And so I don't want mine to be too big. This is a great thing to make for your kids to put their baby clothes in or their first you know, outfit that they wore home from the hospital and little shoes and things like that. It's something that you could very easily present to your kids 
on their 18th birthday or you know give to them to be able to take and very easily store in their space if they want to hold on to that stuff or if you just want to hold on to it for yourself and the smaller it is the easier it's going to be to maintain and that might sound a little counterintuitive because you think you're going to want to keep more than just a small shoebox size of something and maybe it's a little bit bigger than that um, but it actually is going to force you to interact with those memories on a more regular basis you'll be able to visit and revisit them over the course of your life and really curate something that's very special truly special worth holding on to if it's in a smaller box all right now tip number four is to create a digital photo album and try the 800 photos project and i will explain exactly what that is in a second but we're going to talk about the digitization first because this is a big one for so many of my clients and i work with people that have rooms that are lined with bookshelves that are all stacked with scrapbooks and boxes of photos and duplicates of photos and things that have been passed down big boxes of photos and negatives that have just been dumped on them and they're like what am i going to do with all of this it is a huge undertaking and it's definitely something that you should address at some point in your life and it definitely would be worth hiring a photo organizer or a professional organizer who has experience with doing these types of projects to just give you that extra helping hand to get through it it is going to take some time to do it properly but it's definitely worth it and if you do collect a lot of photos doing the 800 photos project could be a really great way to scale down your collection so if you have started taking photos on your phone you can hook it up to google photos to auto sync everything and there is a way to figure out if you have duplicates and just automatically delete those duplicates so that you don't have to worry about that issue but of course when you're going through your physical photos the one thing that i always recommend doing first is checking for duplicates and ditching them there's really no reason to have them especially if it's old school and you have the negatives you can store the negatives in their own specific box and try to categorize them catalog them chronologically or by event or whatever it is that's going to make sense for you. So ditch the duplicates first and then digitizing is actually very easy. It doesn't require a scanner these days. You actually can use photo scanning apps on your phone and upload directly to a cloud or, or to Google Photos. That's one that I tend to lean towards using because it's free and it's something that a lot of people already have access to and so i like to use it because it's just easy and everybody's already got it so that's where i typically tend to point people first and you can use apps like evernote or cam scanner there's a bunch i will include some options in the show notes and in the description of the youtube video for ideas for you to check out tons of free apps that you can use that will preserve color and quality and actually allow you to improve the quality of, of some of these photos if you'd like to do that as well and then you can just ditch all of the physical copies and determine this next thing through your 800 photos project so once you have gone through the process of digitizing all of your photos then you can choose 800 and i know that sounds like a lot uh, or maybe it sounds like a little bit to you but this is one that i get a lot of eyebrow raises about when i offer the suggestion to people and it basically comes down to 10 photos per person per year and if that person lives to be 80 that is 800 photos of them and so you can see like ugh, 10 photos a year are you kidding me is that really actually possible and it doesn't seem like a lot until you do the math and add it up and realize that it is quite a lot of photos at the end of the day so it's definitely more of a minimalist way of approaching photographs but again like do you want to have rooms entirely dedicated to those photos are you realistically if you play it out in your mind gonna sit down and look through every single photo album in that room or is everything just gonna get lost in the shuffle because again everything is special and therefore nothing is special and things just get lost 
they become heavy, they become damaged, they are exposed to humidity and they start to crinkle and curl. And then you're not even gonna be able to enjoy them in the first place. And for some people who have really, really old photos, they literally just start to disintegrate completely because they have dried and cracked and you can't even use them. So if you have the ability to digitize, do it now get it done before it becomes overwhelming. Hire somebody to sit and work through these with you or sit on Zoom with you. I am happy to do that if you need the accountability to get it done and just need the tools and the strategies and the software to use, whatever it is. It's not as hard as, as you might think to be able to do it, it's just time. And then from there, Try the 800 photos project. See if you can get yourself down to 10 photos per person per year and work on curating the best of the best. Work on improving your photo taking skills so that you get really awesome shots and then choose which ones are truly special, which ones do deserve to take up space in your home. And if you wanna print them and create photo albums, you'll have, I mean, gosh, at least between five and eight right there that you can then actually sit down with your family and reasonably look through and enjoy for many, many years. All right, last tip for dealing with sentimental items that you may or may not need to declutter is to create a bucket list of things that you can look forward to and new memories to create. So there's a saying that I heard once that, that represented this really well, and it basically was, you don't wanna spend so much time preserving old memories that you don't have the time to create new ones. And that really hit home for me and is very important in terms of shifting your mindset towards looking for the future. Again, this is creating goals for yourself of things that you have to look forward to so that you have a place to go, a thing to achieve, a step up, a level up, whatever it is. And so bucket lists are a very easy way to start that process. And so just sit down. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You know, you can just sit down with a regular sheet of paper, lined sheet of paper and a pen, and just think through all of the things that you want to do in your life before you die and start writing them down. And then once you have a pretty sizable, healthy list of things that you've always wanted to do, start to prioritize them, see what makes sense, see what you might wanna do sooner rather than later, and start to categorize them chronologically, see what you can get done within the next few days, or the next week, or month, or, or this year, or the next five years, and so on and so forth. And then put the, put the wheels in motion, start to plan for your next bucket list item. And that way you are prioritizing yourself now, you're prioritizing your future self, and you have things to look forward to that are going to push you towards making those goals happen. If we're thinking about the future and having new experiences, we're not going to be as concerned about the past, we're not gonna feel as guilty about the past, and we also want to remember that we need room in our lives and we need room in our homes to have a place for those new memories to live. So if we are filled to the brim with pictures from the past or filled to the brim with furniture in our garages, or, or whatever it happens to be that you're having trouble letting go of. Just try to think about what it is that you want to experience in the future, what you might want to bring into your space and determine a home for that. And if there is something in that space that you have your eye set on that is taking up room, get rid of that thing and make that new memory happen and get whatever the replacement is to put in that space and just have it ready to go. Be very intentional. The, the way that you succeed in this process is by setting expectations that are crystal clear, by setting boundaries that are very firm and specific. And a lot of times, we use words, and I've talked about this so many times before, we use words like maybe, or someday, or could, should, 
that give us the excuse not to do something. And so we want to try and eliminate those words from our vocabulary as much as possible when it comes to making these difficult decisions and get very specific and intentional. Set the expectations, set the boundary, give ourselves the date, envision those those goals very clearly, write them down and flesh them out so that they become reality. And that way you have a framework to, to go off of and eliminate the sort of muddy murkiness, the fogginess of those someday maybe ideas. So hopefully all of that helps. And these are just five of my go-to strategies. And I recognize that you might be dealing with something really heavy or super overwhelming that you might have been avoiding for many, many years. And you just know in your gut that you're not gonna be able to deal with it on your own. It's too hard to face a lot of these things alone. And if you've come to that realization and you just know you need that accountability, you need somebody to feed you those strategies and mind set shifts in the moment to be able to make it happen, then get on my schedule for a free 30 minute consultation. I will leave that information down in the description of the YouTube video. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the show notes. If you are listening to this podcast and we can just talk through some ways of getting this this thing, whatever it is that you're dealing with, tackled and conquered so that you can move on and start looking to the future and living the life of purpose that you deserve. And also be sure to remember to sign up for my Better Habits in 30 Days workshop. It is 100% free if I haven't made that totally clear already. And it's a great way to kick off the rest of the year on a good foot so that you feel like you are making progress towards your goals and just that little extra infusion of motivation that you might be missing. So be sure to check that out. You will get instant access. That again will be available to you in the show notes and in the YouTube video description. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Google, or Spotify. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am releasing new content every single week on both platforms, smash that like button for me. I would love it. Be sure to leave me a comment down below on the YouTube video. If you're watching, ask me questions. I am always down there interacting with my community and answering questions. I'd love to help you out. Beyond that, I hope you all have a fabulous day and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.